Hi, and thank you for tuning in again with us on here, Meeting Up With. This is the beginning of our author series that we're doing um, in celebration of the Miami International Book Fair. We are very excited to be here with Pulitzer Prize journalist, writer, author, Edna Buchanan. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for inviting me. It's fabulous. We're here on the Venetian Causeway, as you can see the beautiful Miami skyline behind us, and we just thought it was a perfect setting to begin our author series. And uh, thank you for being with us. We're so honored. I read about you. You went four when you knew already, I'm going to write books when I grow up. And then you came to Miami, fell in love with it, just like me. I, I stayed, you stayed, and you worked at the Herald. And you worked as a crime reporter. You've investigated like more than 5,000 crimes, including 3,000 homicides. It was 5,000 violent deaths, 3,000 of them were homicides. Others were plane crashes, suicides, accidents. So what is it like to be investigating such sad stories and deadly stories? What is What, what was your daily life like? Well, it was, um, I was on call 24-7, and especially during the 80s when we had the perfect storm and wound up with the cocaine wars, uh, the McDuffie riots, and the um, Mario Bull lift, which Castro, along with all the Marialitos that were seeking freedom, he sent the worst of the people in his jails and his prisons and his mental hospitals. And it just accelerated the crime rate and the homicide rate so much that we were number one in crime in the country. And it was almost like being a war correspondent. I would wind up hearing shots while I'd be covering one story and you'd hear something going on down the street. Uh, I would wind up going from murder scene to murder scene to murder scene. And my editors would often say, um, just cover the major murder of the day. They didn't want me to cover all of them. And I would always pretend that I didn't know what they were talking about, that I didn't get it, because how do you select the major murder of the day? Every murder is major to the victims. And they all deserve to have their stories told, uh, to be recognized, to have their names and what happened to them in black and white, in the newspaper of record, on our consciousness forever. So I covered them all, and it wasn't easy but uh, I have no memory of any personal life for those two years, you know, 80, 81, because I was just going from murder scene to murder scene to murder scene. But it was like the right thing to do, because when people are reduced to a mere statistic, then we all lose. Every life is important. And say that way, can you, can you just tell us a little more about that quote? Like yeah, there's so many cases that haunt me, and they, they of course, are the unsolved murders, the unsolved disappearances, the bodies that we have found, and no matter how much they investigate, they can't even tell us who the dead person was and why does no one miss them. You know, they must have relatives and friends and children. And those cases haunt me every day, every night of my life. I still have the dental chart of this one missing girl on my desk. And every time they find unidentified bones somewhere around the country, um, I send a copy of the dental chart to the medical examiner in that district because I want to bring her home. I want her to go back to her family. And I hate unsolved mysteries, which may be one of the reasons that fiction is such a joy. Because in real life, you know, there are murders that go unsolved, people that are lost forever, but stories without ends. But in fiction, you get to write the ending, you can wrap up all the unsolved mysteries, and you can make the good guys win and the bad guys get what they deserve, which almost never happens in real life. And that actually leads into what I was going to ask you about next and, you know, how you got into fiction writing and tell us a little bit about, about your books. I know that you have, you know, you brought some with us today. So tell us a little bit about your characters and, and do you take a lot of the inspiration for these, for some of the books from things that you've experienced um, as a journalist or do you just completely just fabricate different stories? based on outside experiences, where do you get your inspiration from? Well, I think we all write about what we know, and I knew crime, homicide, mysteries, and so um, that's naturally what I write about. And I think a lot of my characters are composites of people I've met along the way, composites of good detectives or bad detectives, um, victims, um, characters that I've met in the past. And they're very alive to me, my characters. Um, you know, writing is a very lonely business. 
which is one of the reasons I love to come out to the book fair and see other writers right. and see readers and people. Yeah, and they said it was, you know, that um, this um, young woman whose brother was murdered down here, she came down here with her mother to try to help solve the case because the police weren't really working on it. And, um, and the mother said, you know, I was in the, driving them somewhere and the mother, who was like in her late 80s, she said to her daughter, she said, it's just like she had in the books, there's pink skies at night and purple shadows. And, you know, they were from Pennsylvania or somewhere. And I met uh, a man who was the maitre d' at a South Beach restaurant. And he recognized me from, a, I guess, a picture on one of the books. And he said, uh, you know, the reason I'm here is because I read your books and I came down and decided to stay. So it was really nice that I do get to touch people that I never meet. Because at the Herald, the good readers were fabulous. They would call, they would write. Sometimes they'd show up in the office, oh. or they'd hail me down on the street when they saw, us, you know, when I would arrive at a crime scene or something. And they were fabulous, and they would respond quickly. You know, I would write a story, and it would be in tomorrow's paper or Sunday's at the latest. And you would get instant reaction from the good readers. And with a book, it's a lot different. You know, you're working better part of a year, you know, at least nine months on a book. It's like having a baby. You work on it for about nine months. By the time you send it off to the editor, it weighs about five or six pounds. <laughs> and then they send it out into the world, and you hope that it will be well received and treated kindly, and that maybe someday it will send some money home. Excellent. I, I love how you talk about that. It's like raising a child and, and putting yeah. it out there in the yeah, world. Yeah, and hoping that it's treated kindly because, and then when people do give you feedback, when you hear from a reader, and you get a letter, um, you don't know when they've re read your book, and it could be a book I wrote five or six or 10 books ago, and they'll call and ask a question. Not only to sign it, but to put in the dedication what my favorite line of the book was. And of course, if I wrote that book 10 years ago, and it's a very interesting thing, it's nice to collect books and have the writer put their thing, but now I have to go back and read the book over again <laughs> to find the line. To remember because, what was going on. Yeah. And here I am, <clears throat> another book, their book deadline and I have to stop and go back and read one of the old ones to that in fact one of his books that he sent me is on my desk right now and it's been there for about three weeks I have to go back Still thinking of the line go find that line so what are you working on right now uh, I'm writing on a, working on a new novel it's my 17th or 18th book uh, I can't remember if it's 17 or 18 I have to count them up but three of them were uh, non-fiction and uh, then the rest are all novels and this one is one of the hardest ones I've ever done. It's an out-of-series book, it's a standalone book. And it's about, and if not, it's Sunday afternoon, but I think they said the 14th. I should pay more attention. But I'm working on the book, and it's really amazing. I'm loving the uh, way Miami was 100 years ago. Excellent. So tell us where we can, you know, your website, where can uh, fans uh, go and learn more about you, where are your books sold? Give us a little bit of that information. Well, um, most of this, uh, many of the books are out of print, the early ones, but they can be found in used bookstores, okay. I guess, and maybe in paperback. Okay. And uh, the website, I guess, is www.edmundbuchanan.com. I think that's it. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely put it on the website <laughs> along with your bio, so yeah, good. that way everyone can, can find you. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time you and for sharing your wisdom and your stories and your experience with us. It's very exciting. Looking forward to the new book and we will see you at the book fair. Yep, it's a wonderful place. To, I get so excited every year. It's like 4th of July and your birthday and Christmas Eve all mixed together. <laughs> I'm finally getting out to see people. And oh good. It's, it's wonderful, it's a big event. I've been there every year, I think for 22 years. Wow. Excellent, Yeah. excellent. Well, we're very excited. I love, absolutely love the book fair and can't wait to Me see too. you there and continued success. Thank you very much. Much wonderful things. Look out for her new book and thank you.